Hello everyone and welcome back to our class in Artificial Intelligence, Machine Learning and Finance. We've seen the single and the multi-layer perceptron being used for um, predicting digits, handwritten digits in um, our application. And uh, we've also seen how we can use regularization via dropout and early stopping to improve on the accuracy of our models and we now want to use convolutional neural networks um, as yet another alternative neural network model um, that can be used in this case. So for the MLP models we also flatten the input data that is we transform the uh, two-dimensional images into vectors of grayscale values between 0 and 255. Actually, we then transformed all those grayscale values to the interval between 0 and 1. However, the convolutional neural network exploits this grid-like structure of the images. We've seen how it works. It uses filters or kernels that goes through the image and then reduces the information and therefore we need the training and test set in a slightly different structure. So what we are doing is X train and X test. You can see these. Um, we take the MNIST training set and the test set and we scale this um, again by 255. Uh, the dimension of X train is 60,000 images by 28 by 28, 28 pixels uh, height and 28 pixels width and the CNN takes images in three dimensions rather than the MLP. So uh, the last dimension typically has three values, the RGB channels for the color. And as we have grayscale images, we only need one channel. So what we are doing is uh, we are adding one dimension. So actually X train then is an array of dimension 60,000 images, 28 pixels, 28 pixels, one RGB channel because it's uh, um, a grayscale picture and the same transformation is done for the test set. Now the convolutional neural networks can automatically learn a large number of filters. In our case uh, in the first convolutional layer we'll use 32 and they will be learned in parallel. Each filter provides highly specific features that can be detected anywhere on the input images. Um, we've seen this example of a picture where one filter was applied to see the edges uh, without caring too much about the colors, just trying to see uh, edges where uh, suddenly um, something appears or changes in the picture. And in our example, we will apply filters of size three by three. Uh, just as we've seen in our illustration of the CNN and the following lines of code specify the whole model as sequential and add the first convolutional layer. So model CNN, that's what uh, we are fitting, Keras model sequential, layer convolutional two dimensions, 32 filters and the kernel size is 3 by 3. The activation is again the ReLU function and the input shape is 28 by 28 by 1, so um, more or less the X and the Y axis of the picture, the height and the width, and um, one channel for the color, which in this case is just gray. Now the output feature map obtained from the various filters is sensitive to the location of the features in the input. Pooling layers, um, that's an approach to downsample feature maps and they summarize the presence of features in patches of the feature map. So common pooling methods are average and maximum pooling. Average pooling summarizes the average presence of a feature while maximum pooling captures the most activated presence of a feature. So for example, a cat is present in the respective part of the image or it is not present. Yeah? And in our example, we use maximum pooling over patches of size 2 by 2 and this reduces each 26 by 26 feature map. Remember that in each dimension we are actually losing 2 pixels and thus we get its 26 by 26 uh, pixel feature map. And maximum pooling reduces this feature map obtained by the convolution layer to a 13 by 13 map. So we then add a pooling layer, model CNN, model CNN, layer um, max pooling, two dimensional pool size is two by two. We add another convolutional layer, 
this time with 64 filters for detecting more detailed features in the image, followed by another maximum pooling layer. So we are adding layer after layer to our convolutional neural network. You can see here, layer convolutional 2D, filter 62, uh, 64, kernel size 3x3, three three, and layer maximum pooling two-dimensional, again, 2x2. Two two. Um, to complete the model, we feed the outputs from the last convolutional layer, which attached pooling layer, into a dense layer to perform classification. So this is the same as actually in our multi-layer perceptron and in the single-layer perceptron, and it's the same structure. We have 10 units, 10 binary variables for those digits, and the activation function is softmax. So before the outputs from the convolution layer can be fed into the dense layer, the 3D output has to be flattened to one dimensions. And this whole model architecture then looks like this, we have a C, um, we summarize model CNN, and we have these different layers. Um, we have the first layer with 320 parameters, then the second one, which actually has almost close to 19,000 parameters, and the last one has 16,000 parameters. So in total, we get 35,000 parameters, much less than in the example of the neural network of the multi-layer perceptron, um, but nothing. Uh, comparable, for example, to um, the linear classifiers or regression analysis we've seen before. Now, dimensionality of the layers, the input data, as we've seen, consists of 28 by 28 grayscale images. Applying filters of size 3 by 3 to them, so using these convolutions and these kernels, leads to the loss of two pixels in each dimension. If you remember this picture, Where's my, yes, my cursor. We've seen that actually, if this is the pixel, uh, the picture, and these are the pixels, we've seen that actually we are using three by three kernels. For example, we are using these three. Uh, I know actually these nine pixels to calculate this one. We do the next, go one to the right, and then we get this one and this one. And finally, if this is the last column, we get, let's say, this one. And as you can see, we are losing this pixel and we are losing this pixel in this dimension. So going like this. And obviously, we also only compute this one, this one, this one, this one. So in the end, we get a 26 by 26 um, matrix feature map. And as in the first convolution layer, we again apply 32 different filters. Output dimensionality is then 26 by 26 times 32 different filters that we apply. And by maximum pooling with a batch size of 2 by 2, the dim dimensionality is actually reduced to 13 by 13 times 32 filters. So that's what we get in the end. The next convolutional layer applies 64 different filters. Um, of size 3 by 3 to the output. Um, and again, the input feature map loses two pixels. So in the end, we get 11 by 11 by 64 filters. Maximum pooling with patches of size 2 by 2. Number of pixels in the first two dimensions is essentially divided by 2, yielding the output dimension 5 by 5 by 64. And flattening this output tensor yields a vector length of 5 by 5 by 64, so around 1,600. Now, a very important feature of convolutional neural networks is parameter sharing. This is achieved by moving each filter over the picture, thereby employing the same parameters at each location. We've seen that this 3 by 3 filter moves from left to right, for example. As a consequence, the first convolutional layer of our network only employs 320 different parameters, and this compares to almost 200,000 parameters in the first hidden layer of the multi-layer or single-layer perceptron. Then each 3x3 three three filter involves 9 parameters plus 1 bias parameters. And because we employ 32 filters, this yields 320 parameters. So this is why we don't end up with almost 260,000 parameters as in the multi-layer perceptron, but we stay at about 30,000. Pooling does not involve any trainable parameters, and the size of the patches over which pooling is performed is a hyperparameter, but um, in 
the pudding itself, we don't have any trainable parameters. And each of these 64 filters of size 3 by 3 from the second layer is applied to all 32 feature maps. This yields again 18,000 parameters. Pooling and flattening doesn't involve any trainable parameters. And the last dense layer requires 10 weights for each of the 1,600 neurons that are mapped into the 10 output neurons for all 10 digits. And this in the end yields another 16,000 parameters. So in total, we have 35,000 compared to 204,000 parameters. The model is has much uh, fewer parameters, but as we'll see, uh, we don't lose uh, too much flexibility. The compiling and training is done in analogy to the multilayer perceptron, but it's computationally very expensive. So we only perform 10 epochs in contrast to 50 epochs. And this has been done on our university computer uh, center using GPU clusters, which the cluster is suitable for fitting large and many neural networks. And actually, this one was done with four nodes with four Tesla V100 GPUs and a lot of uh, computational power. So compiling and training is done as before. We compile model CNN, cross entropy, metric is accuracy, and we fit the model using X train, Y train, 10 epochs, batch size is 64, and again, 20% is in the validation set. So this is the result. Um, as we can see, accuracy is also very high. We are actually starting here at 98. So this is 99, close to 100% accuracy. And if you look at the validation set, it goes down for some time. And remember, we would have to look at 50 epochs to see where this is going. But actually, even for 10 epochs, the accuracy is very good. And we have, don't have such a high loss when we look at the validation set. So actually 99% accuracy, 3% loss. So the convolutional neural network provides a higher forecasting accuracy on the test set than any of the multi-layer perceptrons. And classification accuracy could probably be improved even further by tuning the model specification by running 50 epochs. And this can be done, but even with this very simple example, you should see that it works much better than the multi-layer perceptron. And this is why actually a convolutional neural network is usually used in practice in uh, these applications where we are trying to analyze images and uh, recognize characters um, from optical data. Okay, so these were the neural networks um, and they can be applied um, in many different applications, actually. Uh, every time you have a lot of data, uh, you have your outputs and you want to do regression or classification. And as you can see, they are highly flexible. They should be applied on big data sets, but then you need to think about regularization, how to combat overfitting. And in the last section of our lecture, we are going to have a look at uh, some different aspects of AI and ML in finance, that is the usage of AI and ML by companies uh, for regulatory purposes, um, by regulators and supervisory um, agencies, and then systemic risk and also some ethical considerations.